You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. So you may on Twitter the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Lust Shards. Uh, quickly be has quickly become one of the most watched uh, series on my channel. I love it. You guys love it. So let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> Relax. It's not the end of the world. My presence in your body will, well, make you hornier, so to speak. Why? How does that even work? Because I don't have a body of my own. Most of my physical feelings will be transferred to you in some, to some extent. Being a demon, I don't get hungry for normal food. Or thirsty or even tired. Lucky you. But I sure do need some action from time to time. That's weird, but it's not a deal breaker. I can live with it. Maybe. Hopefully. Great. Now then. I will open the door. The meeting hall is on the left. Just go back where you came from and go left. You're welcome. The door reappears where it was when I walked in, now wide open. I remain rooted on the spot, shuffling my legs and fidgeting with my hands. A slight blush appears on my face. Well, go on. I want to feel some fresh air, too. I've been trapped in that gym long enough. I mumble some words under my breath. Hmm? What was that? I was just thinking, you know, you did say, but I'm not begging or anything. No pressure, just, I just... Spit it out! When will, when will you use my body, like you said? Oh, I'm doing it already. You're probably thinking of some kind of painful possession. But I'll just stay in your head. You won't even know that I'm here. Unfortunately, the only way for me to interact with the outside world is for you to summon me. And rest, I can experience everything you experience. I can see through your eyes, feel through your skin, and even be somewhat affected by your emotions. Oh. You seem disappointed. It's unusual. I thought this deal was maybe a bit too good for you and not beneficial enough for me, considering that you can't even muster the power to summon and free me yet. So, possession is where this relationship stops? Um. 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 Uh, that seems like a very important choice, so we're gonna just, uh, we're gonna see. Um, guys, tell me what this, one's, what this one leads to. If it leads to sex, I'm kind of, uh, don't know if I want to select it right now. No, no, everything is fine. I'm fine. Stop asking. Don't make me regret my decision. Now, should we get out of here? You'll be late. Damn. I thought something interesting would happen. Besides getting semi-possessed, that is. Let me go ahead and, uh, play the music a little bit. I've been told that this game has a lot of copyrighted music, so... I'm gonna go ahead and, uh... Well, I also can edit out... I can also, YouTube also lets me, you know, edit out the music anyway, so... Alright, let's see where we're going. Oh, we're possessed by a demon. Oh, woo, horny demons. I walk out the door. Nothing seems to have changed. I take out my phone to check the time, and to my surprise, the time is the same. I mean, I'm still late, but at least I'm not completely missing the gathering. Oh, right, we don't know each other's names yet. I'm Travis. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Nice to formally meet you. And you are? Do you really think a demon will just reveal their name for you? It's worth a try. What should I call you? Just demon is fine. I take pride in what I am. No, that's boring. Are, are you calling my species boring? Hmm, what about scribbles? Because of your face. Get it? That is humiliating. It sounds like a pet's name. Well, if you're not telling me your name, then I can't change it. Scribbles it is, then. <laughs> the yellow line appears by the wall. Is that for me? Yes, just follow the line and you'll find the room. Huh, interesting. That we see that. Okay, scribbles, okay. Um, the dragon had that on his face earlier. That's interesting. Was the dragon possessed? Okay. Yes, just follow the line and you'll find the room. The yellow line was not the only thing that appeared out of thin air. I look surprised at the small cloud of scribbles near me. It is weirdly cute the way it floats there with only eyes to show its emotions. Maybe not a pet, but a, a, but a familiar for sure. A great start to my fantasy life. I'm already missing the eternal suffocation. I wonder if breathing is worth this torture and humiliation. I like how that rhymed. Oh, you'll be fine. I suppose teasing my new friend is not the nicest thing I can do, so I stop. For now. I do as I'm told and follow the line. Soon enough, I start hearing distant voices again. <laughs> I arrive at the source of the sound. A grand door, big enough to fit eight and a half of me. I think. Now let me just sneak in real quick. I open the door very, very slowly. The door creaks. Oh, God, that's so loud. The door creaks. Not too loud, but loud enough for a particular character from the back of the room to hear. Someone I recognize. 
Ah! That was cool. Oh, that was fucking cool. Nice transition there. I really hope you stayed quiet about our incident. That noise! I didn't need the whole academy to know I fell down a hole. It came by at the same. It came by at the right time. The headmaster was just about to start the gathering with the important announcements. Even if it wasn't too noisy, a single presence coming in late still attracted some attention at least. A wolf and a tiger, particularly, are the ones I'm most worried about. Those intense glares. Look like they want to make me dinner. Their dinner. It's fine. I see a familiar black and white cat in the crowd, waving at me with both hands frantically. I'm glad there's someone I somewhat know, even if, even if he's probably the weird guy at the academy. Although, looking around, most people have quite eccentric clothing as well. Some very revealing, some just straight up bad, like call the fashion police kind of bad. And some of them are just wearing lingerie. The summer just ended, so it is still pretty hot outside. That's just too distracting. Perverts like me have to suffer because of their fashion choices. What kind of what? Hey there, whole guy. Lucky you. They delayed the gathering for some reason. Hey, crop top. Your trap did leave me a little ruggedly. It did leave me a little ruggedy. You look fine to me. Good things you. Good thing you brought spares. Yeah, I sure did. That's what happened. I just changed. My clothes and fur are shining. Probably cleaner than I left them at home with. Could it be Scribbles is doing? You know you can just ask me. I'm right here. Oh, right. I should get used to talking with myself in my mind. Did you do this? Yes. But how and why? Now that I'm inside you, I can perform what you would call party tricks. Just some personal helpful spells. As for why? I can't let my vessel run around soiled and filthy like that. I had to do something. That was very nice of you. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> Don't get the wrong idea. <laughs> It's not like I like you or anything, Baka. <laughs> Ooh, we can talk more about clothes, cl clothes cleaning later. The headmaster is going to announce the test. Among other things, but I only care about the test. So, the test is real? Should I be what? Oh no. Oh no! Oh, Jesus Christ, you are handsome! I'm cut short by some loud music and the grand figure of a lion. He's huge! Everyone got quiet all of a sudden. Deathly silence enveloped the room. Wasn't the headmaster supposed to be a rabbit? Mom said she heard the results of the new headmaster selection on the news. What was his name? Mr. Sable? Sedil? Mr. Sebel, Mr. Sebel Mandrate. He was supposed to be, but they thought a lion was a better representation of power. A symbol, if you may. So they made him headmaster instead. Kind of racist, if you ask me, but you creatures are simple like that. How do you know all that? When you're stuck in a crystal for so long, you're bound to find information one way or another. There might be more reasons for the decision. But mortal politics never interested me. No more questions. That can't be the only reason. Headmaster starts speaking. Good morning, distinguished, distinguished guests, dear teachers, and beloved students. My name is Argus Kiriman, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to a new year at our prestigious academy. This will be my first year as headmaster, taking this common trait into consideration. I do hope me and all the fresh talent present here today will get along nicely. I would like to thank the student council and shard leaders for their hard work for dealing with the everyday problems and managing the new arrivals, as well as the Teachers' Council and other staff members for their loyalty. I hope we can all get along for as long as I am in this position. With all that being said, it's time for the general rules and history of Laconia. Some groans and grunts can be heard after he says that. I suppose it's the same speech every year. Most first years don't seem too bothered. The headmaster pulls out a huge book, ornaments it with gold or some other yellow material, looking very expensive but also very old. Well, this is going to take a while. He talked about different rules, but, like, how to behave, punishments for breaking said rules, and more, for about 20 minutes. Detention was popular punishment, was a popular punishment choice. Another one was chores around the city, so community service. Sounds unique and quite interesting. Everything else was basic. Your usual don't bully others, don't break anything, etc. Maybe I should have been a bit more late. Despite everyone's boredom, the I mean, Tartarus was beaming with excitement. We look the same age, and I think this might be his first year, year here, too. Finally, the headmaster got to something I'm actually interested in. The first principle of sorting. As most of you know, the Laconia Academy doesn't use the standard class classification you're also used to. Instead, we have the so-called shards. There are four different shards available to choose from. Oh. Slayer's Shard. Their job is dealing with small numbers of nightfallen stealthily and quickly, as well as making sure the protection barriers remain untouched. Sorcery Shard. Usually paired with a Defender or Slayer in missions. Their magic is versatile and useful for many situations, but few possess powerful magic abilities to become a Sorcerer. 
Defender Shard, usually deployed in small areas where barriers were not yet implemented. They play the role of bodyguards for any long distance journey from barrier to barrier. Fucking is this this? Is this for this game? What the hell? Oh my god. This is absolutely insane. Someone tell me if this is from something else. If this is from this game, I'm gonna lose my mind. Like this is like next level detail. Like, furry visual novels don't usually get scenes like this. This is like Lord of the Rings, or some uh, battle from Warhammer lore. Anyway, allow me to paint you the main picture. Long, long ago, our world, being rich with magic, has found itself in a conundrum. Demons started to spawn all around, in each country, on water and on land, although weaker in magic, bigger in number, and physically superior. With the sole scope of stealing humanity's power source, War enveloped every continent, and to satisfy their desire for lust. Oh, their leader, the almighty dragon. Oh, that's him. I recognize him. It's got to be him. Their own leader, the almighty, the almighty dragon, Xerxes, was by far the biggest threat of them all. Luckily, humanity used its superior wits to defeat the dragon, thus weakening all demons and victory was finally achieved. Oh my god. Gonna have to, uh, definitely block that out. Some demons remain in our world to this day, known as Nightfallen. Most of them are near harmless, or better said, not a danger to your life. Just don't turn your backs towards them. Oh my. Others fall under the government's protection. Those are the ones capable of speech and complex thoughts. That are not- that are not also- that are also not an immediate danger. This type is not to be messed with. They're not known for being violent towards strangers unless threatened. Huh. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's... Woo. Dual-wielding clubs? That's pretty cool. I mean, there's no nudity, so... Some are nothing they're more than vicious monsters, ready to use your body and devour your flesh at the first opportunity given. Must be exterminated on sight. Oh, my... Oh, my God. While others... Let's just say they are better left only for the most experienced of hunters. I mean, that doesn't look so bad. Or else. First year students seemed to shudder, while others were laughing among themselves. They must know something we don't. Or maybe the thought of sexy, horny monsters amusing to them. I must admit that a chuckle escaped my lips as well. One more thing to keep in mind when fighting Nightfallen. The main, a the main aspect that distinguishes them from us is the significantly increased libido levels they possess. That's when the people giggling almost burst out laughing. It's common knowledge, but some people can be quite immature. No need to fret, we are all adults here. Just don't let them put their hands on you or tentacles, or slimy bodies. <clears throat> anyway, let's continue. Although far less dangerous than their ancestors, nobody knows what their birth source really is. However, the Nightfallen brought them with, a, with an unintentional gift. When defeated in their stead remains only ash, and a gem. A gem infused with energy varying in size and potency depending on the Nightfallen's strength. We use that energy to power up our technology, magic, and most importantly, the very thing that protects us from Nightfallen. The barriers that surround every city around the world. In order to maintain our energy, we need hunters. Brave hunters that collect gems and protect the people in need. Hunters like you. 
He points at us. The ones that will make our world prosper. That's so extra. I love it! The room gets filled with noise from excitement. That is why, as our new headmaster, I cannot allow you to dirty our schools. No. Our world's reputation by allowing all of you to become hunters. Say what now? Guests appear all around the room. Together with panicked whispers, it's like the first years are the most agitated, but I see a lot of worried looks all around. Tartarus doesn't look concerned, so I keep my calm, too. As the new headmaster of the academy, I decided to implement a new rule. You've all probably heard rumors about this. A little test. To prove you are worthy. Allow me to explain. This academy runs on talent and hard work. If you are present here today, it means you possess one or the other, but in what quantity? And do you keep working as hard to achieve your goal every year? Or do you lay back and relax after being accepted? Keeping your nose up and thinking you're better than others. Those are the questions we'll have to answer in what I call the progression test. It is a multitude of tasks that each student has to complete at the start of the year to prove that they have what it takes to go further. The test will begin on Friday at 9 a.m. sharp, and it would last roughly three days. In the meantime, all first-year students will spend the rest of the week getting familiar with the school grounds, lessons, shards, and training for the incoming test, with the help of your seniors. I also advise you all to start training. The rules of the test and the task will be announced on Friday as well. All right. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. I've got a board game to play with the roommates. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.